generated around 560 plus million impressions organically. There was creating property cards for the first time for people owning houses in the rural areas. We have a patent on a bridge technology which... Uh, but we were really guided by what we wanted it to be. Uh, in terms of the content, consumption pattern has changed. Very competitive, uh, very strong. The objective is basically to democratize cancer care. I see a very bright future for retail industry. Technology now allows us to scale up. We also want to help patients become more compliant. If I look at the custom solutions market, it's almost about $1,500 billion. Your customers will not continue to be with you if you don't change gear. We had adopted digitalization much earlier. Within a very short span of time, we are the number one operator in all of South India. If you are reaching out to a lakh people today, you would be reaching out to an entire globe tomorrow. We got those two brands and then immediately got into a few of the LFRS and there was no looking back. Hello everyone and welcome to the 39th episode of Asset Talks. My name is Ajit Panikar. I've been an Asset member for over 10 years and I lead Nova, an air conditioning company and Pure Blue, a tech-enabled startup in the air conditioning domain. And my co-host is Aleem. How are you doing, buddy? Fantastic, Ajit. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Ascent Talks. My name is Ali Merchant. I run an advertising and marketing company at Mumbai and I'm part of Ascent. Uh, we're proud uh, to be part of Ascent and why we're proud of Ascent is Ajit will what Ajit will tell all you. right. All right. A quick update on what Ascent is all about. Ascent is a non-profit organization founded by Harsh Mariwala, Chairman Marico Limited, and is deep passion for identifying promising entrepreneurs in the growth stage. Its primary objective is to support these entrepreneurs in expanding their enterprises and enhancing their entrepreneurial journey. Since its establishment in 2012, Ascent has successfully empowered over 850 entrepreneurs throughout India. Ascent stands out as a remarkable platform that fosters peer-to-peer -peer collaboration, leveraging the collective strength of its members. And at the heart of this platform is a self-facilitated group called the Trust Groups, where entrepreneurs come together and share their experiences, exchange ideas, and provide valuable insights. By creating such a vibrant ecosystem for learning and growth, Ascent enables its members to benefit from each other's knowledge and expertise. Ascent Talks, which takes place weekly every Friday at 11 a.m., showcases the journeys of Ascent members, highlighting their fascinating entrepreneurial experiences. So let's bring in our guest today, Arun. Yes, no, guests. We have two guests yes, today. Yes, yes, yes. We got two yes. guests. <laughs> so going with the lady first, Archana Salil, founder and principal architect of Arena Consultants. Ar Arena is an architecture and design uh, firm specializing in designing research and development centers for industries like chemicals, food, pharma, biotech, petrochemicals, etc. It's a pure consultancy firm. They don't construct. And welcoming a husband, Salil Sansare, uh, director of LabGuard India and Science by Design Lab System. LabGuard specializes in R&D lab furniture to research and QC labs for biopharma chemicals and food and universities. Uh, present across metro cities in India and export to 25 over 25 countries. Science by Design is a turnkey solution provider for research labs. So today on SN Talks, let's hear about their different leadership styles and what they do together also. Welcome Arjuna and Salil to the show. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Ali so, so we're having our own Salil and Arjuna ka show today, right? <laughs> That's fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, Arjuna, starting with you, can you tell us about your business, what do you do and what's unique about Arena Consultants? Yes, right. So, uh, Arena Consultants is basically an architectural design firm. We do uh, architectural interior and MAP design for research projects uh, across all industries. So, as you said, uh, ke chemical, biology, biotech, pharma, textile and across all uh, India. That is the niche that we have developed over the years and, uh, you know, it's a very, very different kind of sector which I've chosen for my firm. 
and that is where our expertise lies you know we have been working since past uh, 17 years in this uh, field great and salil so no so i think i think you know that introduction now is like a bouncer for everybody to trust me <laughs> you know so it's so technical you know it, so let's 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 make it a little more easier so guys right. have a look at what they kind of do Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Super. Sir, can you tell us about Arena? Uh, tell you tell us about Science by Design and LabGuard, and how did all this happen? Yeah. So, uh, LabGuard is a manufacturer of uh, laboratory film hoods and uh, specialized furniture, and Science by Design is a turnkey fit-out company for complete uh, laboratory spaces. So, basically, we not only manufacture the specialized laboratory furniture, but we also set up the complete laboratories. Uh, if we get the four walls, uh, everything else is done by us. Super. Yeah. Okay. So, I'll, I'll so like just to add uh, with just to yeah just to add uh, Alim uh, with Arena practically we offer complete three sixty degree services right from design right. to the execution. So, yeah, one time customer will be all taken. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Look at one of those projects that they've done. So you know we keep a little more clarity. Amazing is that, yeah. Beautiful. So, so it's primarily, primarily both of y'all are, you know, actually complementing each other. It's a kind of a design and build kind of a thing, but it's a very niche segment, you know. And Archana, I want to actually start with you, and then probably Sally, you can come in. Um, in your consulting space, you know, especially when you say an architect, you know, the the, expre- the expectation is like, you know, oh, okay, he's doing all kinds of projects, right? Yeah. It could be structural, could be interiors, everything. At least that's the general. List. But you are in a very niche segment. So tell us uh, why this niche segment? Why do you choose this niche segment? And what are the opportunities around this niche segment? Is there growth opportunities, or is it just like something small and boutique that you want to maintain? Yeah, uh, very interesting question. Uh, so see, when I initially started the business, it was not like I was doing lab projects. Okay, uh, when we are small, we Uh, start with say smaller residential projects or commercial projects office interiors likewise so when i started my uh, own studio or in a consultancy it was in 2005 i similarly started working on these type of projects but you know the competition was so much uh, that it was really difficult for me to penetrate in the already established market you know market when i say architectural firms who have proven themselves and uh, many a times obviously i uh, used to lose the projects it was not interesting also i started feeling that this is something which anyone can do what is it that i can develop or i can create as my specialty so i was looking forward uh, and that's when you know i got this opportunity of working on one project in pune dow chemicals and then i think that that was the ice breaker or you know it it was just the thing that i needed uh what i realized was i could as an architect bring into the uh, aesthetics or the overall planning and blend it well with the engineering concepts so uh, that was a project which also labgard uh, had got so we both worked together and uh, then it hit me that yes this this is something which challenges me you know i just don't want to design something which looks beautiful but it should be functional also so that is where it picked up and uh, if you say in terms of growth 
well uh, my thought is like you know we are so inquisitive as long as there is research going to happen development going to happen anywhere in in our country or elsewhere there are going to be uh, these facilities there is going to be a need for such space uh, safe and uh, you know uh, such environments where researchers can without any hesitation just go on doing their research so we take care of their necessities safety etc and uh, that gives the growth opportunity so in across any industry domestic international market uh, it's it's like you know huge uh, platform that wherever we want to experiment we want to work we can so yeah that's that's truly amazing i see now i actually uh, i want to also get in salil to actually tell us this. salil we understand you we, we have no doubts you saw the huge growth which is why you forward integrated and you made sure that you know all your leads are secured you got your wife who's your the architect <laughs> I think it's a brilliant move. So I, but tell us what is the kind of growth opportunity that you kind of seen from a contracting side and from a design, from a build side, you know? Right. Okay. Very, very interesting question. So basically, uh, when I started my career, uh, uh, we built LabGuard with the family. We started as a few mode expert and then eventually got into uh, turnkey solutions, then lab furniture and so on and so forth. And we realized that uh, there is a lot of scope for research in India. Even today, Indian government is promoting research, allocating funds, but that is in government sector. In private sector, a lot of uh, biopharma, chemical food companies are investing heavily. CROs are growing. So, so we see a lot of uh, growth in this industry already. But at the same time, from customer perspective, uh, customers, uh, the R&D institutions have also realized that very few people in industry understand laboratory engineering per se. Now, laboratory HVAC, engineering, gas distribution systems is not something uh, which is done in commercial spaces. And it has to be very precise. It has to be very safe. And today, the demand is labs need to look like uh, offices, very beautiful, and also need to be functional and very safe like factories. Yeah. Essentially, laboratories are small factories. So uh, that's why we feel since uh, there is a demand, and we have expertise. There is a lot of growth happening. And India, I guess everybody knows the next 10, 15 years are going to be fantastic years of growth for all of us. And uh, sorry, you know, and Arjuna, see, every organization brings its own flavor to the uh, industry. So what is it that you, what are the changes you guys bought about in the industry when you all kind of you know, started working with each other and with the clients? Okay, so shall I go yes, first? Always. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. Now, <laughs> yeah. No, now we are, we are so, kind of concerned, you know, as to why who goes first, the architect goes first or the wife goes first. Right. So I think we are at an advantage <laughs> on both fronts. So <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I might as well take it. Uh, well, so when, uh, when I started working on these type of projects, I realized, you know, that these uh projects are literally energy guzzlers you know uh, the amount of energy that is required for the functional aspect of these projects is huge it is not like something like you know you air condition the spaces and then whatever power supply is required you uh, uh it is taken care of whereas there are other elements also like uh, exhaust systems and Putting it all together, it, uh, it, it ha so happens that the client has to uh, spend a lot of operational, uh, you know, uh, spends in it. So what I started looking at is whether we can provide sustainable solutions. Uh, we are talking of green energies or uh, green building concepts where you can use those kind of materials. So that is where as an architect, I kind of play a different role here. Uh, teaming up with my uh, own uh, designers. So we ensure that we propose such materials in, into our designs, sometimes go unconventional into that and uh, then see how we can reduce the energy consumption. See, ultimately, we have to be responsible for the environment. And 
according to me we can very well be good influencers you know in in this respect so uh, that is a different kind of approach that we we have taken and uh, it is going well now that's clear to break fantastic salil your take yeah. so uh, as manufacturers of home hoods and furniture we realize that this industry has not progressed much what has been done 20 years back more or less same thing is being copy pasted today and a lot of uh, american and european standards are being put to indian customers whereas indian needs indian work environment research environment is very different our user habits are very different so we started working very closely with scientists we understood their requirements it took us uh, many years and then started developing products which are closer to indian requirements so uh, like our eka fume hood has been the most loved fume hood in india today most researchers love it because it takes care of their many unsaid unmet needs so far likewise we have patented grid selling system called plank which offers flexibility in research because research changes every 3 4 years and that demands change in infrastructure now unless the infrastructure by design is not flexible it's going to cost a lot to change everything so such things we noted uh, and our product innovation r&d team is very very strong so we worked on it uh, i think that's the significant change we brought to uh, our industry amazing yeah. you know tell me something you know <clears throat> there are two challenges here that we kind of see you know one is you know, there is an architect who designs and then there is somebody who puts the design together and all of us understand who are in design and build it's never easy it's never cut and paste you know you put the design you never get it over. so i want to speak on two challenges what are the challenges that you guys face in an industry perspective because of what segment you are in and also working together how do you actually manage that? it's like you know uh, archana will design and uh, when you know when you're putting the plan together uh, something might go wrong and then you might say the design is wrong and the other one will say the execution is wrong how do you handle that conflict it's like you know ठीक है अगले पांच दिन के लिए खाना नहीं बंद टाइम यू नो इज दैट इज दैट हाउ इट इज और हाउ डस दैट वर्क मैन आई मीन टेल अस अबाउट इट अर्चना यू गो फर्स्ट यार अर्चना इज गोइंग नो 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 वेल इट डजंट हैपन दैट वे वी हैव काइंड ऑफ डिस्कस्ड एंड हैव कम टू सर्टेन म्यूचुअल एग्रीमेंट्स फर्स्ट एंड फॉरमोस्ट सी as you said ajit yes uh, at primary level itself you know uh, the discussion between an architect and engineer is ve- not very linear there are uh, always uh, lots of debates uh, disagreements because the architect wants to push the aesthetics uh, the engineer uh, has to say that no we we need so much of space and then we in turn says why do you need so much space for your services etc so these preliminary things we have now kind of uh, overcome it and this uh, has primarily happened because of the change in mindset for me also see when i started working on lab projects i pretty much understood that these are not like commercial spaces comfort it's not comfort environment it is not a residential requirement it has to be functional so in order to do that i have to be more practical and not just be too much focused on creativity okay while at the same time being an architect i can add value in various other ways so uh, you know say, having said this uh, when we started working together we kind of initially well we do used to have uh, lots of discussions but then we kind of mutually agreed that we have our domain expertise and unless or until it is really harming the project then we will try and see that you know we don't step into each other's uh, scope uh, so uh, and and accordingly in fact our teams are also pretty much aligned although we are improving i'm sure salil will little bit disagree on this but that's okay <laughs> no, no, this is the digital platform please don't bring the disagreements here because it will be there for your life long okay so there is no way we can edit and cut all these things with a live show but salil you know salil you are always at the receiving as a contracting company you are always at the receiving end and you have to execute yes but i would like to i, I would like to hear from you the challenges that you face from an industry perspective kind of arshana through the whole challenges in working together but from an industry perspective 
what are the big challenges that you kind of face you know uh i guess one challenge is uh customer expect that we should know everything including their reactions and their equipments uh and that is a bit of a challenge because although we know most of the things but we are not uh, chemistry or we are not uh, biotechnology graduates or phd's right so that's one gray area which we try to uh, handle of course we do have experts you know we do have some researchers working with us within our companies who uh, who help clients and us so that's one typical expectations which i see that we are trying to uh, cover uh a recent challenge in terms of our company i believe what i have seen is uh, you know uh, a few two years back we worked extensively with one particular cr about 40% of our turnover was with them and uh, suddenly the management changed and then they didn't like us due to that reason we suddenly lost 40% of our business now that was a significant chunk and it was a standard business lesson which we had forgotten never put all your eggs in one basket and then painstakingly we started rebuilding the entire organization ensuring that each and every order should not be beyond certain limit and we shouldn't be working uh, so much with a particular client that it can hamper our future prospects so i guess that's a general lesson for all of us now tell me tell me something have you ever screwed up on a project that arjun has designed as designed be honest yeah. come on this is yeah. this is ascent अर्चना so most of the time 90% of the cases we get to know when uh, we are uh, still running the project and we can rectify it. and uh, then of course uh, architect has their own right to you know handle engineers in a different manner which they exercise officially <laughs> <laughs> and unofficially <laughs> yeah. said that's it okay yeah yeah i i i think i can add a little different uh, you know sharing from my own end uh, see a project any which way we all know uh, it's every project is different and it is like i i look at it as uh, an individual every individual is project is different similarly every project is different so what happens is when uh, such things happen uh, first of all being a part of uh you know salil's organization or being his wife uh the approach or the mindset you know has changed because uh as an architect many a times what happens is you look at it with a specific perspective but when we you are associated with a execution company you have to look differently so what happens is when some things go wrong our approach or because of the change in mindset uh, which i had to and believe me it was really very difficult initially you know when i started it uh, but now with habit you know uh, things have changed so the approach is like okay how we can mitigate it as a designer fortunately we can have different solutions you know so uh, Uh, it becomes simpler you know and we can control the damages so that's the benefit that when we work together it it, it kind of helps both of us you know because at times even my team makes mistakes but then they cover it up in some or the other way you know so uh, coordinating regularly helps quite a lot and reviewing regularly quite helps a lot i'll just add one one sentence there is ultimately we look at customer interest what's what's in the interest of the project and such decisions are then taken fabulous absolutely well said uh you know uh, you are both a part of ascent and for people who don't know what ascent i want to talk a little bit about the clause of confidentiality that we signed now both of you are in different trust groups okay and uh, people who don't know about ascent would know that uh, i mean i want i'd like to tell them that you know if there are two individuals we put them in uh, separate trust groups two people connected we put them in separate trust groups so they can open up over there 
Now, how do both of you manage your confidentiality in in trust groups, your respective trust groups? And tell us a little about your ascent journey also. Khalil, you can go first this time for a change. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Okay, so uh, I have been part of Ascent since 2012. Uh, so ever since Ascent was formed, and I believe it was just not possible to to come so far without Ascent. And that is the importance of Ascent I have in my life. So when we when I started with Ascent, I was part of uh, a trust group called Enrich, and I have really fond memories of the entire trust group. Uh, uh, and then later on, uh, right now I'm part of Blue Ocean and many of the, the trust group members are very close friends. If I have any difficulty or anything about business or even sometimes about personal life, I do speak with them and they have a uh, great uh, part of the entire journey. So I, I, will, I will say Ascent on the scale of 0 to 10, it, it, I will give a rating of 9. It has played a significant part in my professional journey today. Yeah. Uh, so for me, uh, I uh, joined us a little later than Salil, but uh, it was really at the right time. I uh, would again agree with him that it is an important part of our life. And, uh, you know, having that trust group, uh, it's like a board outside your office. So sharing the information and getting the feedbacks, the blunt feedbacks in fact have been real eye openers i have been uh, managed uh, i have been trying to you know uh, handle it differently because getting stern feedbacks is so difficult but then having said that uh, we, i keep looking towards it and uh, uh, for every uh, monthly meeting that we have and uh, when it comes to sharing of things, being husband and wife, yes, you tend to share a lot of things. But we do respect that uh, professionalism. Okay. Well, good things we do tend to share. Like, you know, my group may I said discuss kia, chat GPT, especially for example, when it was very up, you know, how how people are trying to use it and all that. Or we go to offside, we discuss so many things which are confidential, you know, money matters and personal things. But uh, over the years, we have le learned to, you know, keep these things uh, apart, you know. And uh, also see, this helps us taking to our day-to-day uh, -day work life also, because it's not possible to share each and everything that happens in your offices, you know, and at times it's not needed also. So I think with this, we learn also what to share, what not to share, or what exactly has to be picked up and, uh, you know, has to be taken ahead. So Ascent has been really awesome. Uh, even for my personal uh, journey, they, the, my team members have, uh, you know, really encouraged me always, and I'm always uh, happy to be a part of uh, Ascent. You know. Proud Great. to be Ascent. <laughs> yeah. So, so we got just about two or three minutes before we wind up. Before we do that, I just want to quickly touch upon this here. You know, both are professional entrepreneurs. Both have a business of their own. You guys did. How do you actually balance it out on your personal lives, your personal hobbies? You know, you have two sons. Uh, how does that happen? Yeah, yeah. Achana, you want to start? Uh, uh, yes. So uh, what we do is we try to take short breaks. Uh, you know, just two of us when you know things are managed by our uh, parents. Uh, for longer breaks, which we look forward to, we club it with our uh, business trips. So that helps. Yeah. And uh, uh, Celine yeah. likes movies. Uh, in fact, we both do. So that is kind of something me time for us, uh, which we enjoy. And a uh, little bit of work division. Rest maybe Celine can share. <laughs> <laughs> Salil, you tell you tell us the inside story. That's what she say. I don't want to talk about it. You tell us. <laughs> yeah, so more or less, it's it's the same, of course. But uh, so on weekdays, it is extremely difficult to have any kind of balance. Out of question. The only time we get is weekends, uh, and that too, preferably Sunday. But we we have made it a habit to take a short break of three four days once a quarter. 
uh, at least four or five such breaks in a year. It helps. We read a lot. So we share uh, what we are reading. Uh, I get up early in the morning. So uh, we get some good, nice. I prepare tea and then she gets good uh, time to chat with me in the morning. So, you know, probably morning times we get with each other. That's that's the beauty. Evening we do get, but it is pretty late in the day. And uh, yeah, I think that's all about. We avoid talking about work uh, at home, but invariably it still happens. It's yeah, still that is a discipline, you know, we are trying to put in place. So that's the thing. Super. Awesome, guys. So we're just done with our 30 minutes, but Salil and Archana, it's been fantastic listening to you guys. And uh, we, we definitely wanted to showcase, uh, you know, uh, a couple who's got independent businesses in different trust groups and how you guys function and how you guys look at us and, and how you're benefiting from it. So thank you, Archana. Thank you, Salil, for taking time out for being with us today and sharing your journey. Thank you so much. Thank you, Salil. Thank you. You know, there's a very famous person who had said, okay, just say, karo byapar, usse mat karo pyar. <laughs> but I'm glad you dispelled that. <laughs> <laughs> Very it's working, funny. guys. It's working. There is an exception always to the rule. <laughs> yeah, right, right. Okay. Yes. Sure. Bye. Thank you, guys. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye. All right, cool. Guys, thank you so much. We had a fabulous session with a wonderful couple. And for all of you who have just interested and who wants to know more about Asin, get to asinfoundation.in. Put in an application out there and the Ascent team will get in touch with you. And if you truly are growth ready entrepreneur, then we'd be happy to have you in our cohort. So get to Ascent Foundation. .in. And thank you very much for joining us today. And uh, we're going to see you next Friday at 11 a.m. with another interesting story. Do like us, do share with us, stay connected with us. If you can't watch us live, get to it over the weekend, get to the podcast channels, we're just all over the social media. Thank you so much, guys. See you next Friday at 11. Bye. Thanks a lot. Bye. Bye.